Hi, my name is Owen Dennis. I'm the creator of Infinity Train. Hi, I'm Madeline Carey Bell. I'm the supervising director. Hi, I'm Justin Michael. I'm the writer of this episode and voice of fan favorite Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Anton Chekhov, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, inventor of Chekhov's uh, multi tool. <laughs> Um, so this episode has a whole lot of stuff in it. Yeah, dang. A lot of stuff. This is a beefy script. This was yeah. the longest script we had in a lot got cut. We could do like four commentary tracks on this yeah. episode. <laughs> well, because and it we had will to... starting now. <laughs> it's Tulip at her lowest. Yes. She has to deal with that. Just decide that it's not worth it anymore. Yeah. Then get reacquainted with the cat. Then go through all of Amelia's memories. Discover who the conductor is. And then afterwards, go to zero, get her door, and decide to go save Atticus. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Although we did a summary just minutes. now, so I guess you could skip yeah, it if so. you wanted. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why did we cut that whole sequence yeah. with uh, the Queen of England talking over a radio? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is not a joke. <laughs> that happened. Our no, producer, Keith, uh, looked into how much it would cost to license it. It wasn't a cost thing. It was a, it was a legality thing. Oh. I guess, like, in the UK, there's, like, legal rules into how you can use the Queen's speech and stuff. So we weren't able to, weren't able to get it. Interesting. Yeah. But... We needed we the time need anyway, yeah, we so it's okay. <laughs> Fun fact about Tulip's numbers going down. Yeah. Uh, those are all just my family's birthdays. <laughs> yeah, I just I put in that. like my mom's birthday sister. You know, just different birthdays. Oh, no, that's fun. Different social security <laughs> numbers. You get it. Yeah, if you piece it together, you could really uh, hack into my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Choosing numbers on the show the is pretty much like us sitting in a room and all feeling like what feels like a good number. Sometimes we'll or argue is it? Or is it? <laughs> and then we'll, uh, somebody will inevitably be like, well, it doesn't really matter. No, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, okay, uh, this one it is. Yeah, or does it? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it could be anything. Uh, Chekhov's tape from Cat's Car. There you it is, the yeah. tape again. Um, trying to think, were there other things we missed? Well, I we... liked that uh, the cat, she doesn't trust the cat, and it, like, you know, yeah. I feel like in a lot of shows or even cartoons, like, it's like, okay, well, this episode she has to, so she's just going to, but Tulip is smart. Yeah. She doesn't, she's not going to get duped. Yeah. Yeah, she lists very reasonable yeah. <laughs> uh, examples of why she doesn't trust her, but for Atticus, she'll give it a shot. I mean, it's... what else does she have to lose? And the cat needs to make it a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's just that's her like nature. part of her driving. She's an opportunist force. and she needs a deal. She can't do something, get something for the goodness of somebody else's yeah. mm -hmm. uh, heart. But this is cool because we get to see the difference between going into your own tape, like in episode five, and going into someone else's tape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't get completely disoriented if you're going to somebody else's tape. You can yeah. kind of navigate it like a, a maze. Well, the idea is that it's supposed to be like you have perspective on someone else's experiences because you're when you're viewing your own experiences through your own head, it's very much you're pulled in, it's your own stuff gets in there. It gets all messed up because mm -hmm. of your own brain. But if you're talking with somebody else and they're going like, I have this problem, you go, what about this? Mm -hmm. They go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, <laughs> God, yeah. We also get more hints about one one's true identity. Yeah. Right, he can control things in the tape, which is confusing. Yeah. Uh, this joke, it's so long, but it's so funny. We cut a bunch of other stuff just to <laughs> It made me really happy because it was one of my favorite jokes, and I was so surprised when you guys were like, yeah, no, it's still in there. Yeah. Yeah, it was really yeah. hard. Jeremy it's... did such a good laugh, though, with, like, the wilting, like, uh -huh. ah, at the end. Uh -huh. it's like, I, we gotta mm. keep it. <laughs> so here we see Alric and Amelia Young in the first row. There's Alric eating jam, which we saw the jam pond in uh, Unfinished yeah. Car. Yep. And then, uh, who wrote, someone wrote that entire essay. Was Who it was so, one of the designers? I think it might, oh, it might have been Allison. And there's Amelia she wrote Baker. her own essay that we then graded. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she got an F. She got an A for design on the show. Yeah. She's really good at her job, and an F on that essay. The essay was not good. <laughs> um, there you go. That's the be closest you'll get to the fart car. <laughs> the diehard so fans of the fart car. Hey. 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 I thought I was the pun guy hey. around here. Oh, hey. Anton oh. Fartal. <laughs> Okay, well, I wasted that time. Um, we'll never get All this get time back. could have been used for something important. <laughs> Amelia is making a crystal radio, showing that she kind of is somebody who builds things. Yeah. An engineer, yeah. Likes yeah, an engineer. There we go. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> they go to school for engineering. Which, uh, she builds a radio, which shows she's kind of a carpenter. Um, <laughs> we get to see um, cute bits of their relationship together and them growing up and going through college. And so if you notice here, there's a brief moment where Tulip notices the turtle handkerchief yes. that the conductor was holding in the previous episode. Yeah. Yeah. 
It was really interesting because this episode obviously takes place in a lot of different time periods, some not all American. And so it was yeah. very interesting to try and make all of that feel real and true. It was heavily experience. researched. Yeah. Yes, there was a lot Especially of research that went into this. Especially freaking. Do you want to talk about that at all? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Actually, Owen taught me about freaking. Freaking, freaking is the idea. There's a is thing it with a able... PH? Yes, freaking, <laughs> like a phony or photograph. <laughs> uh, freaking was a thing that... Uh, people used to be able to do with phone lines where you could play this particular tone into the phone system and then it, you could like reach different locations and stuff. You get like free calls sometimes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You can't do it anymore, but you were able to do it back when it was analog systems. And so it's like, it's a really cool concept that it feels like we need to make sure that we saw, like Amelia knows very specific technical things like that and mm -hmm. maybe yeah. let the audience understand that maybe that's how she took over the train to an extent. <gasps> oh yeah, there's that voice recorder that yeah. is Lena Headey. I yeah. think that that were I, I I think it works at least I think of it as like Mask of the Phantasm where the voice of the phantasm spoiler. It's a property. Is it a Warner property? Yes, oh yeah, it, it is. is a Warner property. We're <laughs> you to say talk that. About it. All right. But like, growing up one of my favorite <laughs> animated movies was Batman Mask of the Phantasm. The voice <laughs> of the phantasm is uh, a difference, the voice of the woman's father who is actually the phantasm. Oh, clever. So they, they bait you in the same way. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. Ashley Johnson is the steward. That's true. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you can play two characters. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of Easter eggs in that um, tube that she falls down, a bunch yeah. of other memories that we don't see full versions of. I want to say we made like 12, 13 of those things. Yeah. Oh, I do the voice of the friend here. Yeah, that's and true. And so that's Kevin. We'll say that's yeah. Kevin. That's why the turtle Kevin sounds like that. Yeah. It's the friend encouraging her to go to a funeral, and she says, no way, cloak time. Uh, I love how Sophia did the rain turning into the static on yeah, the... Yeah, it looks really cool. Yeah. Engineering, that's what Amelia is. <laughs> And we're trying to kind of bait you into thinking that Alric is the, the conductor. conductor. And I yeah. was so worried that it wouldn't work. And then I think it I it think it most I think we pulled does. it off. Yeah. yeah, it worked. yeah. I think so. I, I also love using all the dream logic bits in whenever we're in a tape. That's some of the most fun stuff. Yeah. More one one using his powers. Guys. And there, take us in. Let's follow him. Amelia? Yeah. Just looking at like a hedge uh, yeah. maze. <laughs> One quick thing about the top of the building disappearing, we wanted to show, because the only other train we've seen appear is tulips, and we wanted to show that it doesn't have to appear in a normal place or in a normal way. It can show up anywhere you are in the moment you need it. And also the train that shows up for Amelia looks different than the one that shows up for two. Yeah, they're all supposed to be the train that would most likely get you to board it. Yes. Or that so you what, most need in that moment. What Amelia most needed right then was she needed like a certain amount of like protection and stuff. So this basically an armored train shows up and that's, that's what she got onto. Yeah, she wanted to feel safe <clears throat> and secure and yeah. Yeah. Oh, our favorite line. Oh yeah. <laughs> The showmanship. <laughs> I think this came from a legitimate, like, we were breaking this episode, and we were like, wait a minute, but why would the cat, why do, would the cat do this? Why didn't she just tell her? Yeah. And we were like, oh, because it's the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the cat it doesn't do things in a an easy way. Yeah. She does it she for her do own entertainment. Just to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feel like it feels okay, too, when you think about, oh, well, when you go into tapes, it doesn't actually take that much physical time no. in the tapes we've seen. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, it's maybe a minute or two. And this monologue was really, that was, it was hard to write. And I, I feel like everybody helped out. And I remember Lindsay really helped codify the ending of the monologue to mm. like really turn it into something short, but still got the emotional mm -hmm. beat across. Um, oh. Empathy <laughs> is a lot harder than just hating a faceless enemy. Yes. Yes. And hey, we get to find out where that portal, what that portal was about in episode one. Hey. Well, it yeah. looks like time has passed out there in Minnesota, doesn't it? Huh? Wow, it looks like there's snow out there now. Yeah. Holy moly. Oh, don't you know? Oh, originally it looked like there was just a bunch of ground, but now it looks like there's a bunch of snow all over the place. You know, it looks like a bit of a two-footer out there. Uh, two <laughs> yeah, check on <laughs> two-footer. Oh, yes. <laughs> two by four. Okay. Classic, two classic Minnesota phrase, yeah. the two-footer. Yeah, you know, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> my finger on the pulses, you might say. 
And Tulip's <laughs> finger is on the pulse of figuring out all the things she's yeah. learned and seen on the train. We get, to, we get to see her notebook pay off. Like we, we've seen it only a little bit throughout the se- season, but you see that yeah, she's been taking notes. She's not, uh, she's taking it all in and putting it together. Yeah. yeah. And it's she, very, we, those ports that we saw in the unfinished mm-hmm. car, she's like, oh, I can play the Stuart port. Tenica. Check Sorry, hole. Check-up's Hole, my bad. <laughs> yes, <laughs> copyright Alex Horrib. <laughs> it's very important to us to make sure that like viewers feel like they are rewarded for having paid attention. Yeah. You know, Because I don't want to have to sit there and have somebody go like, a hole? What is that? But well, not I if they don't have to paid attention to the numbers. And then off the- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're punished if you thought it meant anything. <laughs> Or were you? Or were you? Or were you? Could change. <laughs> purple lightning. It was written into every script. You were very specific about needing to be purple yeah. lightning. Well, I saw it over the Grand Canyon once as a kid, and I was like, "Dang, that's scary." I mean, really? that is. That's cool. really cool. That yeah, just cool. atmospherically, it can look like. Let's like, talk about purple. Justin's vacations for the rest yeah. of the time here. <laughs> Justin, you want to talk about a vacation you had when you were a kid? Yeah, when I was a kid, we went to Sedona, Arizona, oh. as well. Oh, that's it's pretty nice. cool. Oh, sorry, that's a company. No. Oh. <laughs> that's a city. Is Sedona owned by Warner, or can we? Oh, it's a Warner company. We got it. Oh, great, great, great. We got it. A work the, company. The, the end. Thank you. The past car. Yay. Yay. 